Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Oak Ridge. Congratulations on being selected to participate in this school. Um, I know that many of the graduates go on to do fantastic things, um, so it's a competitive school. Um, the organizers of the school have asked me to say a few brief words about the, the lab in general. Um, before I start, I would just like to point out that we're being filmed, as I understand it, so um, you're free to ask questions, but um, it should be in the knowledge that you're being recorded. Um, so Oak Ridge National Lab is, is actually one, it's the largest of 10 national labs that are operated by the Department of Energy. And these days, we're really known for our unique capabilities in four areas. Um, those areas are materials research, nuclear energy, computing, and of course, neutron scattering. And the origins of Oak Ridge National Lab go back to the 1940s. We were one of three sites that were involved in the Manhattan Project um, during the Second World War. The other two sites were Hanford in Washington State and Los Alamos in New Mexico. And our principal job was to produce uranium and plutonium. And that uranium and plutonium production was um, done at four sites round about Oak Ridge. And one of those sites, which was called X-10, had an, a reactor. It was actually the first continuously operated nuclear reactor called the graphite reactor. And actually, I think you're going to visit the graphite reactor at some stage during this um, school. But anyway, the graphite reactor started in 1943. Um, it operated for 20 years. Um, at that graphite reactor, its primary mission was to produce isotopes, but there were a couple of scientists who actually developed the first application of neutron scattering to looking at materials. And those scientists were Shu and Wallen. And in the mid-1990s, um, Shu actually got awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics for those early activities in developing neutron diffraction um, to materials research. So after the war, X-10 became known as the Clinton Laboratories, and then shortly afterwards, it was renamed Oak Ridge National Lab. So the origin of Oak Ridge National Lab is, in, um, the, is, is the graphite reactor, isotope production, and neutron scattering. So these days, um, after the graphite reactor was retired, we built another reactor, a high flux isotope reactor in 1965. The primary mission of HIFER was to produce isotopes, but that mission has changed now. And um, the high flux isotope reactor shown here has the primary mission of neutron scattering. So it was built in 1965, as I said, but in 2007, it went through a major refurbishment with um, the addition of neutron scattering instruments and also a cold neutron source or a source for long wavelength neutrons. And these days, HIFAR, which operates at 85 megawatts, provides the world's brightest continuous beams of cold neutrons. So HIFAR has a unique world leading capability. Um, that's HIFAR. Um, we also operate the spallation neutron source. So at HIFAR, neutrons are produced through fission of uranium. Um, at the spallation neutron source, which um, went into operation 10 years ago, we produce neutrons in a completely different way. We accelerate hydrogen ions um, up to almost the speed of light, and then we smash them into a liquid mercury target, forcing the mercury nuclei to emit or evaporate off neutrons. Um, the beams that are supplied by the accelerator are pulsed, so the neutron beams are also pulsed, and because our pulsed beams have that time structure, we can exploit um, um, a, a technique called time of flight, um, which allows us to count the time um, it takes for, for a neutron to travel from the mercury target to the detector. 
And that allows us to understand its energy or its wavelength, and we can use all of the available neutrons using time-of-flight techniques. So between those two neutron sources, we now operate um, 30 beam lines. We accommodate about 3,000 user visits a year, and our sources are highly productive um, from a scientific point of view. I should say that the laboratory as a whole um, has about 4,500 staff, and our annual budget is about, um, it's about one, one, $1 billion. Okay, so this is our neutron science directorate. Um, the important thing to point out is that we have four divisions within which our scientists are aligned scientifically. So we have a division for quantum condensed matter or physics, a biology and soft matter division, a chemical engineering and materials division, and also a data analysis and visualization division. So we regard data analysis, analysis and visualization and modeling as a scientific activity. And in addition to those four science divisions, we have three support organizations that operate the accelerator, um, the reactor, and also a division that develops innovative new instrumentation for neutron scattering. Okay. As a whole, um, uh, you know, as I said, we have about 4,500 people at the lab. They're organized really into seven key directorates. Um, and this is the one that we're um, sitting in just our neutron sciences. Just to remind you that um, um, we, we have, you know, the Spallation Neutron Source provides the world's um, most powerful pulse beams of neutrons. HIFAR provides the world's brightest beams of continuous cold neutrons. And we're proud of the fact that we have these world leading facilities. Um, but our goal is not just to produce neutrons. Our product is science. We operate our two neutron sources on behalf of the Department of Energy to produce and enable science. So our vision is very much to develop the best possible neutron scattering capabilities so that we attract the best scientists like you from around the world to come and work with us to um, solve problems and make new discoveries and do brilliant science. So that's our vision. We're here to do science not just to operate neutron sources. And uh, that's all I have to say, actually. And I'm happy to answer any questions that you have, if you have any questions. Thank you. Okay. I'm actually off to the swimming pool this afternoon. <laughs> Next up, we're going to hear a couple, a few words from uh, Brad Adele, who's uh, an executive member of the, the SHUV, which is the SNS Hyper User Group, and he has some important information which you might find useful. Brad, so uh, you, you want to use the mic? Welcome, everybody. Uh, my name is Brad O'Dell. I'm actually a PhD student in the Department of Biochemistry at North Carolina State University. And I'm also an alumnus of this school. So I completed the National Neutron X-ray Scattering School in 2014. And I hope I'm following Paul's directions to do great things after the school. And as Brian <laughs> said, I'm a member of the executive committee of the SHUG, which is the SNS and HIFR users group. So whether you've been to Oak Ridge before to do scattering experiments or this is your first time, you're all members of SHUG because we represent the needs and interests of all neutron scattering users at HIFR and SNS. And the primary mission of SHUG is to act as an interface between 
individual needs of users and groups of users and scientific communities with the management of the facilities here at Oak Ridge. And so we're kind of the, the body that goes out and finds out where users have needs, have new ideas, and pass those to management. And then we also have the responsibility when management comes to us and says, what's the user's impression on this? And, you know, how do users think we should move forward with this, of reaching out to you and, and, and finding out those answers? So you will see various communications from us. Um, we organize the biannual, so odd-numbered year user meetings on site here at Oak Ridge. The even-numbered uh, meetings happen at the American Conference for Neutron Scattering, which actually just happened last month. Um, sorry, earlier, no, today's August, right? We're in August now, so last month. Um, no, that's <laughs> what I get for trying to be up to date. Um, we also will have various surveys that we send out. We have communications mechanisms. You'll see here we've launched a web-based contact form where any user can, in real time, send us information. You know, you're on a beam line and you're trying to do this and you can't get this to work, or you're sitting in the user lounge and you, you were like, you know what, it would be great if users on site could do this. You know, so we want to collect that information from you so that we understand what users need while they're on site. Um, we also put information out in the user newsletters, which you either have received or will now be receiving as a facility of the user. These usually come out quarterly. And um, we also help communicate information such as the proposal call, which has already been announced in, in coming up in October of this year. I want to point out one thing, is that's um, that my term on the executive committee expires at the end of this year. So if any of you are actually interested in dedicating some time to service of the user community, and then in return gaining a really in-depth understanding of how facilities like this operate, what goes into a user program, what goes into the science here at all levels, um, I would recommend that you consider um, putting your name forward for the elections that will happen this fall for the Shug Executive Committee. So there are details here on how to send your, um, your name in or have someone else send your name in to get nominated for the election. I also have printouts of these two slides in the back if you want to grab one of those to get the contact information. Um, but ultimately, the greatest thing that we ask as the executive committee is that if you have an idea, if we ask you a question, if you're really upset about something and you want someone to know about it, please don't just shrug, talk to Shug. So now, as I said, I am a PhD student myself. I've been in residence here at Oak Ridge National Lab for my thesis research since early 2014. And I count that as a really unique opportunity because um, the lab is recently developing out its complement of graduate students on site for long-term extended visits. But they're still numbering in approximately the 150 to 200 person range. And you think of a, a laboratory the size of Oak Ridge National Lab, that's somewhat small. But there are various initiatives, including those at the DOE level and the laboratory level, that are making it more straightforward for students to come here when it makes sense for their research projects and the questions they want to address and spend time on the scale of months to years. So the first program that I want to point out to you is actually run by DOE, Office of Science. It's called the Office of Science Graduate Student Research Program. And so in quotes here are what you would type into Google to get more information about any of these programs. So DOE SCGSR is a program that sponsors three months to a year of stay at a national laboratory. Your research needs to be aligned to a priority area set forth by DOE. And at Oak Ridge National Lab, we're really lucky that DOE defines one of their priority areas consistently as neutron scattering science and instrumentation development. So that means that if any aspect of your research is being addressed primarily with neutron scattering, you align with one of the priority areas of this program and could propose to come to Oak Ridge for three months to a year to do thesis research here. Now, I have to point out that this one program operated at the DOE level is actually limited to students who are citizens of the U.S. or legal permanent residents. And that's actually a DOE level requirement and something that Oak Ridge can't um, interact with. But there are two additional programs run at the Oak Ridge level, so that don't have the similar, um, that don't have that similar citizenship requirement. The first is called HERE at ORNL, 
the higher education research experiences, those are actually operated by an, a sister organization called Oak Ridge Associated Universities, but it's four stays at Oak Ridge here, and those are normally negotiated at the student supervisor level. So these are very individualized programs where you've reached out to someone on site here and you think it makes sense for you to be here to do some of your research. They have a place that makes sense for you to fit into the research that they're doing and you work out a program through ORAU to do that science. What is really becoming one of the most successful graduate programs at the lab is what's known as the GO program. And so this is a program that I was actually a participant in for um, one academic year. So it's graduate opportunities at Oak Ridge National Lab. And so it's where the laboratory has actually established um, agreements with various universities for how to share students between the university and Oak Ridge National Lab. So there are 17 universities in the US that currently have standing agreements that make it very straightforward for students to be shared from the university to Oak Ridge National Lab. And the way it works is you do your coursework and all your academic requirements as part of your university. When you need to do research that can only be done at Oak Ridge, you come here and while remaining still officially aligned to your university, you're here supported by the lab working on research that's both beneficial to you and to Oak Ridge National Lab. And then in the end, your degree comes from your university just as it would had you not come to Oak Ridge. So as I said, there are 17 universities with current agreements. The director of this program, Dr. Ian Anderson, who is division director for graduate education and science partnerships for Oak Ridge National Lab, asked me to em emphasize specifically that you not be discouraged if you don't see your university, your home institution on this list of um, currently involved parties. The, the laboratory itself actively reaches out to new universities to establish these partnerships anytime there's an interest coming from either side, either from the university or from Oak Ridge. So if you think that this program in particular makes sense for what you want to do, there's information. I have copies of the brochure from this program in the back of the auditorium along with copies of these slides. And so those are the two slides that I promised that I would show. Um, I welcome you all again to Oak Ridge. I'll be seeing you around this week, and if you have any questions, I'll answer them. I'll also be one of the tour guides for SNS later in the day, so we can chat then. So, thank you. Yes. So, if I heard correctly, what are the major responsibilities of being on the? Um, executive committee for the user group. So essentially, um, the executive committee has the role of organizing the various activities of the user group. So that includes monthly briefings on the status of the facilities that happen by a um, conference call with all members of the executive committee and the facilities here in Oak Ridge. You organize um, the user meetings, which, as I said, happen every year, either in conjunction with the ACNS or specifically on site here at Oak Ridge. And then from those base responsibilities, you really take it in a direction where you want to go. So I've had the opportunity to participate in several different discussions and improvement processes just based on where I've seen interest from users. So one example is um, neutron data analysis and visualization. So we were getting a lot of feedback um, when I joined the SHUG two years ago about what users really needed to be successful with their data in terms of support from here and such like that. So that led, has led to, um, I actually organized a session at the user meeting. We wrote recommendations to the, um, to the management. We've been engaged in surveying the community. So it's really an opportunity for you to, beyond the base capabilities, also find something in the community where you have an aligned interest as well, and then use the position of SHUG to advance the capabilities for everyone. So you, you, know, you, you are kind of a Congress member for the, the members of the SHUG, but the idea is that um, it's really what you make of it. So the formal responsibilities are quite small, but you have to view it as an opportunity of what you can do for the user community. Okay, thanks guys.